Welcome to the Parkin Report. Joining me in this part of the program, uh, Mark Roden and Chanel Stokes, students here at Parkland College who work for the Parkland College newspaper, The Prospectus. Welcome to the Parkland Report. Nice Thanks for having you. me. Uh, Mark, uh, whereabouts are you from and what's your major here at Parkland uh, College? Champagne, all the way, originally born and bred. Um, my major is mass communications, so hoping to uh, get out of here after it'll end up being three years and transfer. Okay. On, so. uh, Chanel, what about you? Where about you from? Um, I graduated from Muhammad in 2010. Um, I'm majoring in mass communications and photography here at Parkland. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how you uh, both got involved uh, in the prospectus. Mark, how did you find out about the paper? Um, I mean, I read them. Like, when I first got here, I read it all the time, and I've, uh, it really looked interesting. I was hesitant at first because I didn't know what the workload would be like, but, I've, but at once I finally got up enough courage to join. Um, it just, it's been, it's worked out ever since. Had you any yeah. previous experience working on a school nope. newspaper? Nope. First or? time. First time. So what, what about you, Chanel? <laughs> had you worked on a um, newspaper before? No, I had not. And I had actually was taking a class with Kendra McClure. She's one of the communications teachers and she took us down to the prospectus office because we were learning about the media in, within Parkland. And that's how I figured out about prospectus. So when you first sort of were introduced to it, sort of, what did you think about it when you first? Uh, um, well, they needed photographers mm -hmm. and I'm, I love photography, it's my passion, so I had talked to the editors, which is Sean, and he gave me some insight and they pretty much hired me right on the spot. So what were your first uh, sort of uh, responsibilities when, when you started working? Um, just taking pictures for the newspaper, um, whatever articles were given to writers, I would take pictures for them, and then I moved on to being the web content manager, in which now I'm the photo editor there. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mark, what about, tell us a little bit about the prospectus, uh, I mean, how many times uh, is it published? Uh, who, sure. How many people work on it? Um, well, our staff has grown recently. We used to only have about four or five writers, which was really put us in a bind. Now we've got about 10 to 15 people that are putting out stories for us every week. comes out once a week. Um, there's, there's no charge. It's free, obviously. You just have to be here at Parkland to pick one up. So. And it runs out throughout the whole year? Or? Yes, throughout the entire year. Um, we, don't, we usually we're stop right before finals is the last one we put out each, each semester. So. so tell me a little bit about when you're sort of thinking about a student uh, newspaper. What are the sort of things that you want to try to cover? I mean, there's a difficulty. It's a weekly paper, right? So right. you can't sort of do daily <coughs> sort of stories. So talk a little bit about the kinds of areas of the college that you try to cover. Uh, well, I mean, when I, for, for me personally, when I first came in, I told them initially I wanted to be a sports guy. So I tend to, I spend a lot of time at the athletic office and get to know a lot of the people in the sporting, sporting area. So really, it just requires, since it's not daily, like you said, it just requires a little bit of extra research. You know, our stories are a little bit longer because they're not, you know, written daily. So that's, that's really the only difference between a daily and a weekly like we have. So you're reporting on sort of sporting events, but also you're focusing on individual personalities within the sports teams, right. coaches. Right. Yeah, it's more, it's more of a feature-based kind of thing instead of just, oh, the, what's the score of this game, the highlights, write it out, whatever, that kind of thing. So. Any sports that you had no involvement with before that now you know a little bit more about as a result? Um, volleyball was actually really interesting and surprising to me. Just this, this different strategy that really most of us don't know about that they use, just using the setting up their middle hitters and the blockers and really just the way they coach it is totally different than what you'd expect. And so. uh, this was a particularly good year to be covering volleyball. It Harvard was. College. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, 20, 27 game win streak or something like that. It was a school record. Never been done before. So, yeah, it was exciting. So nice to be able to cover that and yeah, be definitely. part of that action. Oh, so, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now, what about the other areas in the newspaper that, that uh, the prospectus covers? I mean, uh, what, tell me some of the other sort of, sort of sections of the um, paper. That well, we actually, just this past year, we started doing a video portion where uh, we had a, a videographer. He would take interview people from around the college, whether it was the culinary or just counselors, he would take them into the prospectus and interview them and do a video and put them on YouTube. So that's something new that we've been doing. We've been fo focusing more on our like Facebook and Twitter accounts and that's something that, that'll get us out there. We've been doing weekly awards for people who like our Facebook accounts, mm -hmm. um, doing galleries for our photographers on to the Facebook accounts also helps us get out there and people know more about prospectus now. So, uh, you know, this is one of the kind of interesting things about uh, print publication right now, mm -hmm. that you have to have this web presence. Mm -hmm. So are you finding that as a result of the web and social media presence that more and more people are getting interested in? Oh, yeah. I would say from when I started back in 2010 that we have a lot more readers um, now than when we did uh, before because now we have the online out of the Parkland 
website mm -hmm. and our Facebook which updates people that will lead them back to our website which will get more hits and then our YouTube accounts. Talk a little bit about sort of the atmosphere of what it's like to work uh, in the, in the in environment. Is it a collaborative process? Uh, do you guys get to know each other, work well together? We, we do actually work well together. It's a group of people that have so many different personalities and we're creative with our ideas. It's really easy to get along with a group of people like that. We all um, want to work with each other and want to push each other to work harder. So it's, it's a good group. I'd tell anyone to get involved, even if they don't even write, um, doing photography or helping out editing the paper. It's a good group to work with. So a lot of different pieces uh, to mm -hmm. putting a, a publication like this together, both mm -hmm. in, in terms of a print. Talk a little bit about sort of the various different roles that uh, people have within, within the paper. Uh, I mean, we, you've got your writers who are um, in charge of writing. It's about ideally an 800-word story once a week. And then you've got your photo. We, uh, we have to meet with our photographers and decide on how we're going to get a, a photo for that particular story. And then... Once those are all put together, uh, the photographer has to write his caption, and then that gets sent to uh, just the publication computer, and they put that together Mondays and Tuesdays, and comes out Wednesday. So do you so. have a, a sort of an editorial meeting or a process where you're sort of examining the whole uh, paper for the week? Yes. Uh, well, every Mondays, we, uh, we meet at 3 o'clock. It lasts about an hour. We just discuss uh, different story ideas that people have, and how we can come up with photos for that particular story. Can you talk a little so, bit about sort of the, uh, the kind of culture of putting a piece like this together? Uh, maybe, you know, it's a collaborative process. You rely on mm -hmm. many people in order to do it, but maybe sort sure. of anything you, you've learned from, from going through the process of putting it together? Uh, yeah, it, you just you have to stay on top of it. You just you have to keep after it. I mean, if they don't get back to you right away, you just have to keep trying. I mean, you don't want to be a pest and be uh, overdo it, but you have to... Be kind of be relentless in a way, and try to make sure you can get a hold of them and find a time that works. And do it early. It's like it's like registering for classes. Do it do it early in the week, so you give yourself time to meet with them and get the story out. So, well, what a great uh, what mm -hmm. a great life lesson uh, to yeah. learn, and a great connection back to sort of your practice as a student. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what about um, sort of uh, maybe things th that you learn about the college that you might have learned uh, about or known about before? Well, um, being a photographer, you have to go around and take pictures, so you'll be walking around the whole college. Um, I've talked to advisors that will give me more information than, than needed for captions, but they'll give me more information that I could probably tell my writers. And then going on to sports, I, I'm able to meet with coaches and athletes, and they're able to tell me what other sports are going on and what other things are going in within the college. Do you think that the experience that you've had at Parkland is going to translate into other work experiences that, that you oh, might have? Oh, yeah. Um, well, going to college for a photographer degree, being in the prospectus for photography has helped me communicate better within, um, I do photography outside of Parkland for personal use, and communication with that is, is a big thing. So I've learned a lot of communication within the prospectus, helping me talk to clients, getting to know them, understanding their background, ending up with a better picture. So a lot of the things that's gone on in Parkland has helped me. That. Do you think working in a newspaper is something that you might end up doing as part of your career? Um, no, I really don't know. <laughs> I, I want to keep my options open. I love working with the photography um, um, part in the prospectus. So maybe that could be part of my future. Maybe it won't, but I'm open to anything. Mark, what about you in terms mm -hmm. of like your future career? Do you think this will be something that will help you? It will. Oh, I'm a huge connoisseur of the News Gazette. I mean, I read the sports, say, sports page of the News Gazette every day, and I've always wanted to get there and be someone that's writing for that. So, yeah, newspaper is definitely a big part of my goal. I mean, as long as, you know, people are still reading newspapers 10, 15 years from now, I would love to. It would be a big thing for me. What do you think will change as you go forward? I mean, you know, you've obviously working on a paper here and learning mm -hmm. about deadlines and working with people and, mm -hmm. and learning more about particular sports. So what do you think might change as, as, a, as we move on here? Uh, well, I, get, I mean, as far as, like, getting out of school. Well, I mean, just like, in terms of the newspaper industry and how you have to cater to readers mm -hmm. differently. Uh, I think... Like I said, I think print is going to decline slowly, and what's what would end up happening is that you have to take your writing online, because more people are wanting to get it online nowadays. Nobody wants to spend you know fifty to seventy five cents for a newspaper to read it and then throw it away two seconds later. So we also have a PDF online, so a lot of people are able to read the actual newspaper mm -hmm. and flip through the pages online. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I flipped yeah. that PDF mm -hmm. file. Mm -hmm. Is there something though exciting about when that first run comes back and you actually have the print copy in your hand and you can look at it? It is. It really, it really is. That's kind of that. What that's what motivates me to be able to see my name and my work in the paper every week. It's How about uh, developing some skills as a writer and writing to deadline and, and sort of having to come up with an angle and a story? Mm -hmm. um, how has that helped your writing? Uh, tremendously. Um, just well, what I always what I kind of do is you get, you get the research part of it first, and so when once you know what information you have, you can kind of you kind of decide your angle based off of that and how you can best write it. So yeah, I'd say it's definitely tremendously helped my writing skills. Do you find yourself now looking at other sports journalists and other major papers around the country and sort of thinking about how they've come about? writing from a particular angle for a story or getting ideas mm -hmm. from other writers? I do, I really do. Um, just the, col the columnists, they always, uh, they, back up their po they back up the points they're trying to make with great statistics and they kind of know what they're talking about because they've done their research and I definitely think that's something I'd like to get into. And in, in terms, Chanel, of the media in general, are you finding that more media students are beginning to sort of uh, think about this uh, opportunity at the prospectus as a way to get good experience for many aspects of media? Mm -hmm. I would say um, a lot of photographers, I can help them. We have our own little studio set up in the prospectus, so I'm able to show them how to organize a headshot or organize a group photo, and then we can do outside photos with sports teams too. So it's a really good aspect of teaching students, even though they're not in an actual classroom. Well, we're delighted to have you here uh, mm -hmm. today to talk about the pr prospectus, a really wonderful, and I might m sure. add an award-winning uh, <laughs> student newspaper, has won many awards uh, mm -hmm. throughout, the year, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the years here at Parkland College, and um, I appreciate it, you being here to give us some perspective on it. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you, Seamus. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back after this uh, short break. <laughs> Hey, Allison and Dylan, what if I told you you could get a head start on college before you graduate high school and for little to no cost? Well, I'd ask you what the catch is. Yeah, how can I take college courses if I haven't even finished high school yet? That's easy. You simply enroll in dual credit courses at Parkland College. But won't that be expensive? Yeah, will all the credits transfer? Well, most four-year universities accept these credits, and you're actually saving money. Many times the high school will even cover the cost of the course. Um, I'm sorry, did I overhear you guys correctly? Did you just say that you could take college courses without paying college tuition? Yeah, all we pay for is the course and the textbook, and we can earn college credit towards getting our degree. You guys are catching on. The credit works toward a two-year degree, a four-year degree, and even toward career certificate programs. I like the sound of this. I don't know, this all sounds great, but I already have a busy schedule and I won't have time to drive to classes. You won't have to. Parkland offers a number of dual credit courses online in addition to the on-campus courses. Some of the courses are even taught in your high school. You mean to say that one of the high school classes I'm taking right now could work as a dual credit course as well? Yes, you should talk to the school counselor to see which classes are offered as dual credit in our school. Then all you need to do is apply to Parkland and once you're accepted, fill out the application to the dual credit program. You'll need the signature of your parents and advisor for this. That sounds easy enough, but are there any requirements to being eligible for dual credit? Yes, you must be a junior or senior in high school, age 16 or above, in order to be eligible for dual credit courses. You can print an application online or visit Parkland's admissions office to pick one up. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to see the counselor right now. Yeah, I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Me neither. Welcome back to the Parkland Report and joining me now is Chris Foster, uh, Director of Programming here at PCTV. Uh, welcome to the Parkland Report, Chris. Thanks for having me. Well, you're usually on the other end of the, of the camera working in the control room. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, history of PCTV, uh, how long it's been at Parkland, uh, what you do here. Well, um, Parkland actually started doing some programming like in the early 80s, but that was kind of where they did programming, but then they sent it to like the local cable company and they'd mm -hmm. put the programming on but they didn't really have their own channel until about the mid 90s and that's when PC TV came around so that's when Parkland really uh, you know had their own channel could create their own identity and call it PC TV and start doing some of their own things. And PC TV is actually a, a, a real standalone channel right? Right it's a 24-hour channel um, it's channel 9 on the Comcast cable system here in town if you have the AT&T cable here it's channel 99 it's kind of like an on-demand thing where you have to 
pick the drop down <laughs> box and pick the channel that you want to watch. Um, and then we also, you know, we do stream our channel live on the website and it is 24 hours, like I said. We have some satellite programming that helps make it 24 hours. We have like NASA television and Classic Art Showcase, which is a cool, just a random video feed of like arts, like plays and musical and stuff like that. And then we also have um, DWTV, which is like a European news feed, so we get some news out there as well. And then we fill the rest of the time with programming that we produce here ourselves at Parkland. So talk a little bit about um, the, the programs that we produce here. Parkland Report obviously is one of them. How many other programs, uh, standalone programs, do we have that we produce here? Um, they kind of shift in and out depending on uh, what's going on, but we normally have around 10 shows that we produce on a somewhat regular basis. Um, half of them, about half of them, are normally done here in the studio, and Parkland Report is our main staple. Uh, we try to do that during the semester at least uh, once every two weeks, so we do a couple a month. Um, and that's just, to, you know, to let people know what's going on at Parkland and inform them of construction or whatever's going on just to bring people on and talk to them. We also do a show in here called Dollars and Cents, which is just about business in the community and how Parkland's connected to that. Um, we do a show in here, which is one of our newer shows, which is really cool. It's called If You Liked, You'll Love. Um, and it's got Matthew Hurt and Sid Slobodnik, who teach English and film appreciation. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they talk about um, new movies that just came out of the theater they said, if you like that, and then they say you'll love like an old classic film. And they'll, they'll each pick a film, and they'll talk about the movie. We'll show a couple little movie clips, and it's really a cool show. Cobra Corner, we do that in the studio as well, just to talk about the sports teams and stuff. And then we have another huge clump of shows that we do outside of the studio, where we take our equipment out and bring the video back and edit it. Um, like uh, for art's sake, we do a show at the art gallery. So we go to the art gallery when artists come, and they talk about their work, and we put a show together for that. Uh, surrounded by science. Uh, our most recent episode is on the new fitness center here at Parkland, so we're letting mm -hmm. people know about that. So shows that sort of focus uh, on topical issues that are going on or, or sort of in a sort of a serial sort of manner. We're talking about specific issues in a topic like science issues. I mean, so we have some flexibility in how we go around and sort of highlight, spotlight different things that are happening on campus. Yeah, and in another show that I thought of was like Parkland Garage. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've got a lot of construction going on here at Parkland. Right now we just did the Parkland Report on Construction. I just said the show about the fitness center. And we're in the works of trying to do a, a Parkland Garage, which is a show on our automotive department here in Parkland, on the new building that they have. So it's just a way to get the word out and to the community about what's going on at Parkland so they can see our new buildings and new stuff. and. Uh, things like that. And we connect it as well to sort of the various different academic departments which are here and, and student service areas so that we get to sort of spotlight what's going on in those areas too. Right? Yeah, and we try to, I mean, our hosts come from Parkland. Um, so like the science show is hosted by David Leake who runs the planetarium. Um, we had another show called Learning to Grow which is business and agri-industries. Uh, Parkland Garage, like I said, automotive department. So we're always trying to get new ideas for shows, but we're also trying to kind of spread it out through the departments. Mm -hmm. Another show I just thought of, which is done by an English instructor here at Parkland, um, down here in the studio, it's called Interlocution. And what he does is, uh, he, once their students in his class get done writing a research paper, they come in here for a half hour and they discuss the topic. And it's normally something somewhat controversial like the last one he did was on the soda pop ban in New York. Mm -hmm. So, but it's really interesting to get a professor in here and then his students and have them talk for a while and kind of get a student perspective on issues like that. Speaking of students, talk a little bit about how you staff the program and programs here, uh, how you uh, get the staff to run uh, some of the pieces. I know yourself. I mean, you're you're involved in a lot of the sort of camera work and sort of setup and, and taping of shows. Uh, what about some of the other sort of student help that you have? Sure, as a full-time staff, it's just me and Mike Coulter, just the two of us. But when we're doing shows like For Now, for example, um, it's completely done by COM 144 course, which is our video production one course. So any of the students who enroll in the video production classes, we try to get them involved in the production um, so that they're doing it. And right now, um, Mike's editing something in his office, so right now the students are completely running this production. So the main way that we staff things is just by getting students from the classes who are interested. Um, they can do it during class time or sometimes they just come in as a volunteer and do stuff. And then in the spring semester we also normally get a couple interns from the video program and staff them in there as well and kind of integrate them more into like the editing process and stuff. So the students also are able to work on some other projects outside of class or as part of the classroom rather which are outside uh, projects and so some of the sports uh, uh, sort of games and so on that we've have at Parkland, you've also been working on producing, right? Yeah, that's one of the things we've had the last couple of years. I've tried to make a big push to add some sports to the programming. 
and uh, we did uh, three soccer games this year, and the students were doing the production for that. Um, uh, sometimes I directed, but they directed, they, they technical directed, which switched the cameras and stuff, ran the cameras, and held the little thing that gets the sound of the players, you know, with the wind and everything. So, yeah, they get to be able to do sports, too. We, we did some volleyball last year. We're going to be doing some basketball again. So that's another aspect as well. Talk a little bit of how the technology and the cameras available has made it a little bit easier maybe to do some of the uh, uh, outside sort of uh, events. Sure, sure. Well, um, like the, the, the cameras that we, st we still use sometimes, we were tape cameras. But, of course, when you tape something, you have to bring the tape back. And then if you taped for 30 minutes, you got to play it for 30 minutes and it takes 30 minutes to load into your computer. But our newer cameras uh, shoot on just these little SD cards, similar like what are in digital cameras. Um, and they shoot straight to QuickTime video, which is the files that we use for our editing system. And we just basically pop the card into the card reader and just drag the files onto the computer and we're ready to edit. So it does save a lot of time as far as not having to load tape and stuff. And also, um, they're HD cameras as well. So we're upgraded the quality in our video there. We don't, PCTV doesn't broadcast in HD yet. That's kind of up to the cable company since sure. we just send our signal to them and then they can decide whether... Um, but we can still shoot in HD for stuff that we might put on a website or for stuff that we might show internally here at Parkland. Um, and even if we do use it, the HD cameras for shows here, it just kind of has that widescreen look with the bars at the top of the screen. Well, the cameras also are a little bit more mobile. I mean, not, you don't have these huge heavy cameras that you normally associate with like a studio camera system, for example. So you can have some handheld stuff, which I guess is, makes it easier to, to get them on site. And I, I, I realize you still have some... Sure. Cameras on tripods, but yeah, absolutely. We actually we got two HD cameras, and one of them is one of the bigger ones, and that actually does have the ability to convert to a studio camera if we ever are able to go HD. But we do have a small one, which is very handy. It's uh, nice and handy. You can just grab it and go out to the college and shoot whatever you need to shoot, and you don't have to lug around a bunch of heavy stuff. So yeah, it's very helpful, and it shoots great quality video even though it's a small camera. So one of the sort of uh, things about media and how it's changed in the last couple of years is that the ability to go from web to TV and TV to web. And so when you're talking about sort of taking particular screenshots or a particular sort of, uh, sort of still image uh, and use that as a, as a part of a website or as part of some other presentation, it really has sort of been transformed compared to the old sort of tape system, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, and we use a lot of, you know, when we're doing our shows and stuff, we'll pull a lot of still images just right off of video that we've shot and use them on the website or sometimes even marketing calls if they weren't able to get somewhere or they weren't at something and said, oh, I heard you film this. Can you make some still images um, from your video for this? And we'll do that and they'll end up on the website. And, you know, it's, I, it's not going to be as high, high quality as like a, a regular mm -hmm. photo digital camera, but it's a, definitely a good enough quality that's good enough for the website. How do you go about sort of uh, building a plan for the improvement of the technology which is changing so quickly and developing, you know, the resources you have here? Um, I mean, that's obviously it's tough. You just try to look at kind of what's available and think about what you want to do in the future. Um, you know, one of the couple things that we're kind of looked at is, you know, obviously possibly upgrading to HD in the future if that's possible. And then we're also possibly improving our equipment that we use to do the sports that we were talking about. Um, so you kind of just kind of lay out a plan, whether it's a three-year, five-year plan, and kind of put it on paper and put it, put it in a database here at Parkland so that at least people see it and know that you're thinking about it um, so that when the time comes that maybe you might be able to implement that, you kind of already have it sitting there ready to go. What's involved? We talk a lot about HD, and people are pretty familiar with the terminology, but in terms of bringing this channel into an HD environment, I mean, we rely on the cable company. Would we need special equipment in order to be able to do that? Yeah, um, we just, basically we just have a fiber link directly from here to a head end at the cable company, and then they take our signal and put it on the air. So that's kind of how it works. Now, they could uh, decide that they want to give us an HD channel, which in today's terms, basically the way they do cable, that means bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So it depends if they, you know, they only have a certain amount of bandwidth to, get put, to put up all their channels on there. Um, so if they have enough bandwidth and we, maybe we asked for it, they, then they might give us permission to do that. And once they did that, then we would have to get equipment on our end. We'd have to get HD cameras for the studio. We'd have to have um, HD equipment in the, that, in the room where we send our signal back to them that's sending an HD signal. Um, and you could even start slow where you could just get a box that converts your, converts, 
your signal to HD. You might not be doing everything in HD yet, but it up converts it to HD and then sends it. So first starts with the cable company, whether they're willing to part with the bandwidth. Um, and then after that, um, it's kind of would be on our end to kind of upgrade the equipment. Well, I know it's a very creative and innovative place. A lot of new th sort of exciting things happening, lots of new programming, and a, and a great way to sort of uh, highlight and, and publicize what goes on at Parkland College and, and uh, a fantastic laboratory for our students to be able to work in and, and get real-world experience uh, every day. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for being here in the Parkland Report with me on this side of the camera. Uh, thanks for all you do. All right. Thanks, Seamus. That's it for this edition of Parkland Report. We'll see you back here next time. Yeah.